y'all, the cast has left Canada. They are now back in Atlanta. So Sierra is visiting Rennie, and we learned that Sierra has a new man and a new sob story. So her divorce has been inked, sealed, delivered, and this new man of hers has been trying to get with her since she was 16 years old. So she says she doesn't want to jump into anything just yet, but she's seen someone. Um, sweetheart, that means you jumped into something. So she wants to keep her relationship private as possible while being on a reality TV show. A man whose face we've seen, whose name we know, but she wants to maintain her privacy. Okay, uh, good luck with that because we know who he is already. So I hope this works for her because she is a hopeless romantic. And like she said, she always jumps from one relationship to the other. So we are rooting for you. But I want to know, since he chased her for so long, why didn't she ever date him? And then why now do you decide to be with him? Moving on, uh, Rennie drops a bombshell and she shares with Sierra that she may be expecting. On the other side of town, Amy goes to visit Jessica and to check on her because Jessica got sick in Canada. And we learned that Jessica has stage four endometriosis, which means she has a cyst on her ovaries. Now, you can go through the surgery to get them removed, but most of the time they do come back. And from what I've seen my friend go through, that is the worst pain in the world. So she tells Amy that she's planning to start her in vitro because she really wants to have children, but it's been difficult for her. And she said that the worst thing is that she was with a man who can get everybody and their mama pregnant except her. Um, and that's none other than Nick Cannon. And I, I really do feel bad for her. Amy confides in Jessica and tells her that she's been struggling with the same thing. She's not able to conceive as well. And I really hope God blesses both of them with kids because kids truly are a blessing. Meanwhile, Yandy and Mendices are going through it. Mendices doesn't feel loved and he doesn't feel like Yandy prioritizes him or the kids. Um, so let me give him some reasons why he should feel loved because he needs to be reminded. Uh, well, first of all, she stood by you when you were doing your 10 years in jail. She stood by you through the cheating scandals, the baby mama drama, the side baby. Yep, she stood by you through that. If that's not love, I don't know what it is. Um, but I do agree with him as far as her prioritizing her kids and your husband. They should be the priority. But Yandy says a part of her wants to still make decisions because she's she's her own person. And I think I get it now. She wants to be married, but still have um, her autonomy, still have her sense of self. So this is what women mean when they say they lose themselves in marriage. Now, I have never in my life heard a man say they lose themselves, but the woman is always losing themselves. And I didn't understand it, but I, I kind of get it now that she broke it down like that. So Yandy wants to be married, but she still wants to maintain her sense of self. Hmm. Yeah, I guess women really do lose themselves in marriage. Hmm. Huh. But she put up through so much with this man. Being in prison, the cheating scandals, baby mama drama. She stood by him. Now, keep in mind, she did this. Without being the wife, they were not married. But in spite of all that, he doesn't feel loved. Hmm. But as far as Yandy making decisions without him, I do think that's wrong. Um, you, it is, it, I mean, it, it's a, a sign of disrespect. Um, but yeah, so Yandy already has in her mind that she's going to donate this egg. She's going to do it. Um, and my advice is to just do it and just don't tell Mendices. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Or maybe Keisha can ask someone else in her family. Or maybe Yandy can just tell her, well, my husband doesn't want me to do it. So therefore, we have to find you another donor. And I honestly think Keisha would understand. Meanwhile, Jessica is visiting Carly and in walks Kai like a pimp. Wondering why Carly hasn't prepared dinner. He didn't say, good morning. How you doing? How was your day? Nothing. So she tells him she's taking care of her best friend. 
And he wants to know, well, why is she here? And then tells her the next time she's not able to prepare a meal, she needs to give him a heads up so that he will have a plan B as to what he's going to have for dinner. So Jessica checked his ass for the way he was talking to Carly. And she said, kings don't speak to their queens that way. And he said, first and foremost, you're not the corrections officer. And she said, uh, no, 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 no. I don't need to be. But I can correct some bitch asses when I see it, child. And Jessica made a good point. If he would act like that in front of her, disrespecting Carly in her own damn house, what is going on behind closed doors? How dare you? walk into her home, not give her a proper greeting, talking about some, yo, Carly, what's up? Where dinner at? Why is she here? Like, really? Carly, you deserve so much better. You, you really do. The man has umpteen women in his phone. He's cheating and then have the audacity to come in your home and disrespect you? No. Meanwhile, Rennie thinks she and Zach, who she's been with for under 11 months, may be expecting. So they take the test and it is positive she is with child. And he says it's about time. So they plan this. Um, is he trying to trap her? <laughs> but anyway, uh, the baby was made in love. They love each other. And Zach seemed to be a stand-up guy. Kudos to Rennie and Zach. So Rennie decides to share the news with Sierra. And Sierra, don't you make this about you. And Sierra means well, but sometimes subconsciously, I don't think she's aware that she does it, but she can make things about her when it's not about her. But yeah, girl, don't you make this about you? So as we all know, Amy Luciani has broken up with Mozzie, but she wanted to meet with him to reveal the secrets she's been keeping um, since they've been together as far as her fertility issues. Um, it went well. I wasn't expecting it to go well. It went well. He was understanding. Um, he supported her and he didn't judge her. I mean, at the same time, it would have been helpful to reveal it in the relationship and not after y'all break up. But the bottom line is she did reveal the secret and a burden was lifted from her shoulders. Side note, Gael is always wanting to be with men that are attached to someone, uh, Gael Mazi is single. Uh, hit him up. So Zell is having his fashion show. And let's just say his fashion show was delayed because there was another show going on. Kai decides to pop up unannounced, uninvited, unexpected because he wanted to apologize to Carly. So he has his jeweler with him. And he has three engagement rings that he wants Carly to choose from. So Carly, in pure fashion, when she gets an engagement ring, she's going to fall out. Tonight was no exception. She fell to the ground. So Carly and Kai cause an entire scene. Jessica is trying to get Carly off the floor. She is crying and um, uh, crying out of excitement. And Jessica is trying to get her into just to calm down. So as she's trying to calm her down and hugging her, Kai said, listen, that's my job. That's my woman. I got this. So Jessica is pissed because she is not a fan of Kai's. She said the rings are fake and as quiet as it's kept. He's driving around in Carly's cars. So he's driving around in her cars, but has the funds to buy a five carat ring. Uh, something ain't adding up. And I think he's using Carly. Carly, you are being used. And how the hell he bought this ring because he was fired from 1501. So meanwhile, Carly pulls Kai to the side and she wants to know what's up because he didn't get on one knee. And then he nonchalantly show her three rings to choose from. And he didn't officially ask her to marry him. So she wants to know if the proposal is coming next. So he says she has to trust him and he has to trust her. And said then he would get down on one knee after he earns her trust. So it's not an engagement ring. It is a promise ring. First of all, you are half of a hundred. How the hell are you going to give a grown ass woman a promise ring? You guys are not in high school. That would work with a sugar baby, but not a grown ass woman. Like, come on, Kai. He is really trying to finesse her. So once um, the show was over between Kai and Carly, 
Zell fashion show can now begin. So he was late because of him. They don't took over his show, stole his spotlight. And I'm proud of him. I mean, it was better than She by Charade because Zell had the fashions. So yeah, we are proud of you. I loved it. So after the fashion show, Jess, she ain't happy with Kai. And she tells Amy and Zell that Carly has been the happiest she's ever seen her and it ain't got shit to do with Kai. So Jessica says Kai is definitely putting on for the cameras. He's putting on the show because where was this niceness a day before? So Amy was like, well, maybe he had a bad day. Child, what she said that for? Just snapped. She says she don't care about materialistic things. She care about her friends, emotional and mental health. So she is pissed that Carly accepted this ring from a man who doesn't respect her or honor her. He cheats on her and very disrespectful. So she says she wanted no part. She is not supporting this engagement. She said she is done and she walks away. Meanwhile, Zill is clutching his pearls, wondering what the hell just happened. Erica Banks, she has her album release party, Diamond, Scrappy, Mama D, everyone is in attendance. So Diamond pulls Mama D aside because she wants to clear the air about the fiasco that occurred at Mama D's party. So she tells Mama D that her dad is on life support and that Mama D is the only one that's been supporting her. And I'm so really, I'm really so sad for her. So she starts crying and Scrappy comes over to see what, you know, what was going on. Uh, Diamond is upset that Scrappy hasn't been there for her, despite her being there for him. So she makes it clear. She made it clear to point out that Erica was not there for him during his divorce. She was. And I feel like the ladies have so much animosity amongst themselves. Diamond, Erica, and Bambi, when the animosity should be towards Scrappy, he is the problem. Now, he may be a good dude, but just allows you as partner and husband. So Scrappy gives her a hug and says that he loves her. And she tells him to act like it. It sounds like the side chick wants the main chick benefits. Well, then again, it's not really the main chick benefits because Scrappy does not know how to love. He knows how to tell you everything you want to hear, but he, is, he does not know how to love. He shows just enough and do just enough in order to maintain access to these women but as far as loving someone he doesn't have a clue and i hope that when his daughters start dating that they don't encounter men like him and scrappy said himself that the issues that he have with women is due to mama d he doesn't know how to treat women good because of mama d however i do think that he should also take some of that responsibility himself and that is the end of the episode. If you made it this far, give the video a thumbs up, leave your thoughts in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to y'all next video. Bye.